As protests over racial injustice and police brutality morphed into riots and looting across several U.S. cities, some college students are speaking out about whether the violence and destruction of property is an acceptable form of protest. Watch this. Yeah, I'm in support of the riots personally. Whatever you need to do to be heard is, is the cost of it. I feel like it's inevitable that if change is going to come, there will be some violence that comes with that. Honestly, I think it's justified. I mean, <laughs> the people in power have stolen so much more. Anything that any of them loot will never match up to how much has been stolen from them. What would be your message to the business owner that says, you can protest, but when you destroy my building, you're taking away my way of making money for my family? I can understand uh, the business owner's side as well. Um, it is a tricky situation, but um, I'm leaning more towards being able to, you know, protest out there, kind of rioting um, every now and then. Understand that there's a larger, there's a larger cause that people are fighting for versus like the cost that it's going to take to repair your small business. Joining us to discuss that is Eduardo Noret, digital reporter for Campus Reform. Uh, Eduardo, thanks so much for coming on. Yeah, I got a tough time just even watching and hearing those those, those clips. I'm sure folks do at home uh, because lives are lost um, and, and businesses lost, etc. Um, but you see these college students defending looting and riots, riots and saying how they're justified. Um, and were you surprised when you saw the results from that reporter? Absolutely. It's senseless. It's shocking. That was our editor-in-chief, Cabot Phillips, and he wanted to know what students really think about what's going on. And, of course, you heard them say, well, it's okay. You have to understand the frustration of the rioters. Um, the businesses can recoup their money later. This is more important than that. This is about racial justice and social justice. And that's ultimately what they believe. They believe the ends justify the means, and they believe it's okay to go destroy a business, to go destroy a community if it's done in the name of social justice. And that's unfortunately tied to the culture that we've been covering at the Leadership Institute's campus reform on college campuses. We've covered professors, we've covered courses that are actually encouraging this type of mentality among students. You know, there was a class at Washington and Lee University that got a lot of attention for teaching students how to overthrow the government. Uh, several weeks ago at the height of the Black Lives Matter protest, there was a professor at John Jay University, an art professor, who was tweeting and teaching protesters how to properly tear down statues. So when this is the mentality you get from professors, from, from classes, from campuses, students go around and they hear that this movement's in the name of social justice, and they're willing to do anything to achieve it. You know, and before you put a bad taste in your mouth for those at home about college students, there was a college student that spoke to Cabot Phillips in the video uh, that actually condemned the violence. Here's that. They believe that looting is illegal. It's great that this country, this beautiful country, has all the right to express their thoughts, opinions in, in um, uh, whatever form they want to utilize, unless it's violent. As long as it's peaceful, as long as it's um, within the boundaries of rule of law, uh, I think um, it's good. It is so there's, there's one... Uh, Eduardo, there's one guy uh, that yeah. wanted to condemn it in his own way. And again, but when you see them condemn it, by the way, it is interesting that how you see people um, use political correctness, right? They're not outright saying this is horrible. They're saying, oh, well, it's okay, the peaceful protest, but so there's always a but there. Right. Why aren't there more uh, students speaking out about the unrest and the chaos? Well, it's because this movement has become so powerful. And in the last few weeks, we've seen how strong the cancel culture movement is associated with Black Lives Matter, where it's, you better join Black Lives Matter. You better say you're on board or you're going to get canceled. We're going to come for you. We're going to come for your small business. We're going to come for your community. And Cabot was telling me, and I've experienced this myself when I go out and do videos, he was saying there were a lot of people who said they would prefer not to speak on camera, that they didn't really agree with what's going on, but they were afraid to show their face and simply say something that most people would agree with, which is, hey, this writing, this destruction, that's a little too far. And it's, it's crazy that that's where we've come in America, where people are afraid to say that. Another aspect of this, just to give you a little insight into the mind of a student, we've covered college professors who have told students that Professor uh, President Trump, excuse me, is a fascist, that Republicans are leading an authoritarian regime. And so that's why students think they have to resort to this, uh, me these methods to get the change that they want. So instead of teaching students that America has a system of government where change can be done peacefully, change can be done democratically, that you can go to the polls, that you can organize people, instead of teaching students that, they're teaching them, you're living in an authoritarian regime. Your rights are going to be taken away. You have to rise up. You have to commit violence to get the change you want. And unfortunately, that's not true. And if this continues, I can only imagine what the future of the country is going to look like.
Edward, let me ask you this, because you made a, a great point. Uh, you, you talked about how these college students are informed uh, by their professors, uh, and I believe that as well. But I'm curious, and to your knowledge, are they watching cable news? Because you do get different messages based on, I talk about this all the time, which channels you turn to. Uh, is it coming from newspapers? Is it coming from cable news? Is it coming from TikTok, Snapchat, different ways to get your, your news? Where, where do you believe it's coming from with your eyes on the ground there? I've talked to students about this, and unfortunately, it's strictly coming from social media. Social media has the power to do a lot of good. It has the power to get news and information out there. But the problem is there's a lot of information that's inaccurate out there. And so with this topic specifically, with police brutality, with Black Lives Matter, you know, when there is an, an instance of, you know, a shooting, what, before the facts come out, a lot of these students see the videos, they see the commentary without getting the full picture, and they, they rush to judgment. They also see some of their friends make postings and, 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 you know, put hashtags and talk about these things without really being informed, and they jump on that bandwagon. So I wish, like you alluded to, that students would go to many different news outlets from many different sites to get their sources to make an informed opinion. But unfortunately, that's not really what hap what's happening. It's coming from social media. It's coming from their friends, and it's coming from an in uninformed place. Look, I always appreciate you coming on because you give a fresh perspective for our viewers out there to understand um, what a different generation goes through and how they get their information. It is not the same as picking up your local paper or, you know, um, again, watching cable news. It comes from uh, social media, as you pointed out, and the professors. Eduardo Noret, always great to see you. Thank you. Thanks for having me.